Ready? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Kimmel Bay Church this morning. If you don't normally come to church, can I encourage you? Relax, enjoy yourselves. It's Connor and Natalie's big day. If somebody said or you've had the thought that you're going to get struck by lightning, I've never seen it happen yet. So don't worry. Just enjoy yourselves and have a great time. A couple of notices first. Turn your phones on silent. Don't be that one that ruins the wedding. It's been recorded. Um, if you've got children here, don't worry about children making a noise. Let them make a noise. I've got children here. If yours are louder than mine, I'll be well impressed. So don't worry. Keep them, just let them enjoy themselves. The candles are real, and I've kicked them over. I was the first one to kick them over. Just be careful when you're mingling afterwards. They are um, real. Uh, they're going to come in a second. Natalie's going to come through this... Um, the aisle here. She's asked, please could you not take pictures with your phones and cameras when she's walking down the aisle? Once she's gone past you and she can't see you, then fire away. But she doesn't want cameras in her face, which I get that. Um, but let's enjoy yourselves. Have a great time. We'll, I'll just go and check at the ready and then we'll get started. Thank you. Please be, be upstanding for the bridal party and the bride.
triumphant. A warm welcome to Kimmel Bay Church to a day of a day of joy and a day of celebration. I get the privilege to say, Natalie, you look amazing and beautiful. You've done a real touch of class. I've never seen the church looking so amazing. I think we might keep it all. <laughs> Excellent. The bridesmaids all look beautiful. Lucas and Theo. Excellent, such, such cool dudes, um, brilliant. Uh, last but not least, Connor, you look lovely in a skirt today. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're here today to celebrate a day of joy, and Natalie and Connor would like to thank you all for joining them to share together on their special day. And it is a day to, to celebrate, and it's a day of joy. So let's do that together this morning. As we witness Connor and Natalie making their vows together and promises, for those of us who are married, let us remember with joy, hopefully, and responsibility, the promises and the vows that we made ourselves many moons again. And let's remember to keep those vows and to stick to them. We're going to start our service with a couple of songs. So if Connor and Natalie, if you'd like to take your, your bench, but don't sit down, stay standing, and no kissing yet, you're not married. Uh, the musicians are going to join me. There's no, there's no words on the pieces of paper you've got, and the order's wrong as well, so um, don't, worry about the, don't worry about that. It's just there for show, Connor said. Um, the words will appear on the screen. Um, if you don't normally come to church, don't be shy. Join in. Um, enjoy, the, enjoy the worship. Thank you, Lisa.
Sorry about that. I'd like to invite Lucas to come and do his reading, please. Give me a second, Lucas. You hold that. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord who gave you so you must forgive others above all clothe yourselves with, with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your heart for as members of one body you are called to live in peace and always be thankful Well done, Lucas. We're going we're gonna to sing a song now, but the musicians aren't going to come. It's going to be on the TV screens. Um, it's a song that's been written by somebody called Steph McLeod, who was dear, is dear to Connor and Natalie because he was a homeless man on the streets of Glasgow, and he became a Christian. Some Christians reached out to him, and he'd been struggling with alcoholism and drugs, and he's gone through the 12 Steps program with the AA the AA programme that Connor and Natalie have done. So it's very dear to him. He played the song to me, and the guy's got a great voice. He's, he's really good. I was so impressed. I was a bit jealous as well that he can sing so well. So please, can we stand? Um, it's a song that some of us will know in Christ alone. Uh, the words will appear with the song as well. So please join in. Thanks, Elaine. He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still, when striving cease My comforter my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless pain, this gift of love. And righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on that cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I Light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day. Up from the grave he rose again, and as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his. And Oh, 
I said he had a great voice, didn't I? That's a great choice, Connor. Excellent, lovely. I'd like to invite Sue to come and bring a reading, please. This reading is from chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude, this is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does, does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and also perseveres. Love never fails. Thank you, Sue. I forgot to say sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt her halfway through. Um, we have an honorary Welshman in, in Kimmel Bay Church. I say he's an honorary Welshman. It's because he's got a really cool Welsh accent, and he's going to come and pray. Oh, here he is. Thank you, Hugh. Honorary Welshman. I'm not sure that I've ever been called that before. I'm Welsh through and through, South Walian, of course. It's my privilege this morning to be asked to pray for Connor and Natalie before they take their vows. Now I'm aware of the fact that uh, some of you perhaps have been Welsh, and some of you have been happy with God now, Father, we thank you for this occasion and for the great joy that we have in gathering together with Connor and Natalie in your presence, presence of the Almighty God, our faith and bound of love and commitment to each other. We thank you for the institution of marriage and for the way that we see quite clearly from the Bible the Christians that we believe to be the inerrant, inspired, infallible word of God. Marriage union is one man and one woman with your intention for the family of society. We thank you this morning for honor and humanity and for the way that they have approached this day with prayer and spiritual planning. We thank you for their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that they know Jesus as Savior and confess him as Lord. We remember that recent occasion of their baptism at this church on the Sunday morning and of the way that they come to church their commitment to follow Jesus. This morning, God in our heart, as they take their vows, we pray that they might do so in a manner pleasing and glorifying to you. We would ask you that, that they might enjoy this day, that we all might enjoy this day, that they honor the Matthew in particular but remember it with great fondness in the years to come. We commit them to you this morning, in love and in that name, which is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All together. Amen. Thank you, Hugh. You can stay seated. I've got... 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes for a short message from God's Word, the Bible. Um, you've noticed over the last couple of years that Connor and Natalie have turned their lives around a little bit. I'm sure you've, as friends and family you've seen that. And they've started coming to church, so obviously... Hiya, Sue. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sue was saying, bring the microphone higher. Obviously, obviously they've stopped being alcoholics and they've started coming to church and reading the Bible. And I'm sure some of you may have said it or you've been thinking it, oh no, they've become Bible bashers. Just so you know, 
God's got a sense of humour. He's a God of love, and it's okay. Um, I became a Christian 20 years ago. We've been called all sorts. But actually, the Bible, I like the acronym. I hope it's going to come on the screen. There we go. Basic instructions before leaving earth. It's actually got some good stuff in there, to be fair. Um, we're not a religious church, so to speak. Um, but we believe in a God who's personal, a God that brings transformation, and a God that anyone can have a personal relationship with. Religion is a set of rules of do's and don'ts, but Christianity is life transforming and it's life giving that you receive in a personal relationship. Jesus said this, one of the reasons why Jesus came was he said this, he's come to set the captives free, he's come to share good news, he's come to heal the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn and to bring joy instead of sadness. I think they all sound like pretty good things. And he sets people free so they can enjoy life and go on to live a full life. The Bible calls it abundant life. And it's a life of adventure and it's a life that's full of love, joy and peace. And we see that in Jesus' life. He came to earth and he chose, the Bible says the 12 disciples, but he chose his 12 mates and they went around and had an amazing adventure. They went around in Israel and they went to some funerals. And Jesus turned up at a funeral and he just said, come on, get up. And people raised from the dead. And that's what Jesus did. It was a life of adventure. Growing up, I'm sure you've all heard the story when he went to a wedding and he turned the water into wine. Can you imagine it's seven o'clock tonight in the barn in the vinyl barrow? Don't you two imagine it, okay? But everybody else, it's seven o'clock, the party's going, the music's, there's a band, there's a band, all sorts. You want another drink, you go to the bar, can I have a beer? Stella, sorry, none left. Um, Foster's, do you drink Foster's? I'll have a Foster's, sorry, all gone. Copperberg cider, all gone. The bar's completely empty, you'd be gutted, wouldn't you? I'd be gutted, I'd like a shandy. When Jesus went to a wedding, that's what happened. Right at the start of the celebration, they ran out of wine. And Jesus said, fill those large clay jars of water, and he turned it into the best wine ever. That's what Jesus does. He's an amazing guy who came from, came from heaven, and he's God in fully human form. He did amazing things. The Bible gives guidance to us on how to live, how to bring up children, how to resolve conflict in lots of areas in our lives. And he also gives guidance on marriage. God ordained marriage. God ordained marriage and sex. On, at the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. And there was a day when Adam and Eve, they figured it all out. God wasn't in heaven going, no, don't do that, don't do that. God created us for a reason, for a purpose. And that's to be in a relationship of love with one another, but also into a personal relationship with God. He ordained us and created us for a purpose. In the Old Testament, it says this, two are better than one, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And it says a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. The Bible here is given a picture of a strong marriage, a marriage that's strong because God is at the center of it, a marriage that when one man is joined together with one, ma well, one, one wife and that God is in the center, it's a strong marriage based on love, where they're intertwined and built strongly together. Some of you might think, oh no, I haven't got at the center of my marriage. That sounds boring, but it's not true. Marriage is based on love, and the Bible says that God is love. So when you have God at the center, your marriage is based on love. One of the fruits of having God in your life and in your heart is you experience a supernatural, spiritual love that's life transforming and life giving. What does that mean practically? As you'll know, Connor and Natalie like a drink, and I used to like a drink, and I, I still do. And if you have too much to drink, what is the effect? You get, you get drunk, then you get a hangover. The drunk, the drunk is better, isn't it? If you take too many drugs, you get high. But the Bible says the fruits of the spirit, the fruits, the effect of having God in your life, is you experience a supernatural love that's life transforming. The fruits of the spirit are love, joy, and peace. For those of us who are already married, I'm sure you'll agree, love is something that needs to be worked at. You have to make an effort. After the honeymoon period in a couple of weeks, and you have your first argument, you realize love is something that has to be worked at. God defines love, as Sue read for us, in an amazing way, so much more than we could ever comprehend. 
that Connor and Natalie aim to love each other practically as this verse says. Love is patience, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. When you live together with somebody after the honeymoon period, there's those little things in their character that start to get on your nerves. Those little things that they do that start to wind you up. Obviously, this doesn't happen in my marriage because she's in the room, so I need to be very careful about what I say. But if you're to ask her after, the list that my faults are a lot longer than her faults. But the point is, in that verse, what does it say? Love is not easily angered and it takes, it keeps no record of wrongs. Connor and Natalie, apply that verse to your marriage and you won't go far wrong. It says love is not self-seeking. The best pattern, the best form of a marriage is when each partner is living that out. Love is not self-seeking. When you put the other person first, you put your own agendas to the side and you live to, to release them and you live to please them. And if you follow that pattern, Connor and Natalie, you won't go far wrong. One piece of instruction or advice from the Bible for each of you. Connor, your responsibility in marriage, it says this, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Love your wives as Christ loved the church. The standard for husbands is high. Jesus gave up everything. He went to the cross so that people could be forgiven, so that the people could be set free. And that's how you are to love Natalie Connor. Love your wife as Christ loved the church. If you follow that one simple advice, it's simple, but it's hard to put into practice. Natalie, my advice to you, if it's Monday morning and Connor's going through your drawers looking for a dress to go to work, give me a ring. <laughs> Something's gone wrong. <laughs> Um, my advice to you, Natalie, is to uphold and to support Connor. Now, don't take that the wrong way. I'm not saying that Connor's higher than you, that women are inferior. The Bible says that we're all equal. Men and women are equal. But Connor, and I say this as a credit to him, Connor gives out to lots of, lots of people. He sponsors people through the AA scheme. So he rings people daily. He texts people. He visits friends in prison. He's giving out to people. So Natalie, I encourage you to uphold him and support him emotionally, emotionally, spiritually, and give him some encouragement. Men need encouragement. And I know Connors, and lots of the men, we all like to be the big, strong guy, don't we? But deep down inside, we need emotional support as well. To, to close, can I encourage you both? Base your marriage on love, the definition of God's love. Keep that at the center. Apply that verse. Read it to each other on your anniversary and just reflect on it. How can I do better at loving you? If you do that, you'll be a blessing to each other and a blessing to your family and your friends. Amen? I didn't time that, but nine minutes. That'll do. <laughs> Would the lovely couple like to come and join me at the front? hold hands. The purpose of marriage was ordained and given by God that a man and a woman might enjoy lifelong companionship, help and comfort each other through life. Into this holy estate, Connor and Natalie now come to be joined in marriage. Before you say your promises and vows, I need to ask the congregation a question. If anyone can show just cause why they may not be joined lawfully together in marriage, please say so now. Laughing and coughing isn't included. Thank you, brilliant. Please would you like to join Natalie and Connor in standing. Connor and Natalie have written their own promises to each other. So who would like to go first? No, you can go. No, you can go. You go. No, 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 you can go. There's only one way to show. Go, go, go. First.
Okay. <laughs> I don't know how well I'm going to go with this without bursting into tears. And my record of crying is, uh, not, uh, is a bit bad, so here we go. <sighs> okay, Connor, I take you as my husband as we continue to grow on this journey together. I can't help but thank God for his grace and redemption throughout our friendship into the relationship we have today. From the moment we encountered our first connection while both enrolled on a recovery course from alcoholism in Bangor in 2019, we both had an experience finding out that we had Kimmel Bay Church relatedness and we were both seeking faith from the same church. In this moment in the classroom, time stood still for a brief second for me. In an instant, I knew we were going to be close. I had a feeling of excitement, um, a wow moment. What were the odds, you see? I had prayed and wrote down specific values, morals and characteristics of somebody that I would love to meet and share my life with. Oh, I'm going to go. Oh, I need to hold on to this. <laughs> okay. Uh, after many years of being alone and hurt, one of them was for him to be a man of faith and someone that went to church. Our time from here was spent talking, messaging and getting to know one another and laughing until my belly really, really hurt. Uh, we helped one another and we experienced going for coffees, walking in the cold. Um, we travelled on trains and uh, got caught running in the rain. We'd also catching buses because we both didn't have our driving. But we also, we were sneaking at fire escapes when we shouldn't have. I'm so sorry, James Deacon, to bring it up. I'm just going to move that way. I forgot where I was now. Um, oh, yeah. Um, we also attended Alcoholics Anonymous meetings together and we would read the Bible and we both embarked on a 12-step uh, recovery program. We shared our recovery paths and supported each other. I felt so blessed and very comfortable around you. You never judged me. <sighs> Got to hold it. <laughs> Second time. <sighs> you never judged me. Um, we had a common peril bond of understanding each other. And this laid the foundation of where we are today. Don't worry, people, I'm nearly done. Um, you have restored my faith and supported me to stand strong in the armor of God. We have grown in mind, body, and spirit closer to Jesus. Oh, third time. I am truly forever grateful for your encouragement to walk as one in the journey in faith. You are kind and you are silly. You have strong passion for helping others and you are truly selfless. And you are so honest. You always make times make me smile. Don't cry, you're making me go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me a minute. And I'm back, okay. <laughs> you always make time to make me smile even in my moments of moods. I have a lot. Um, you, can put away, you can put away a huge tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream in one sitting like no one else can. <laughs> You acknowledge my strengths and accept my faults and you make me want to be a better person every day. I take you as you are now. Tomorrow, four time. Okay. I'm for eternity to come, to be my husband, even when the day comes when we are old and grey. Well, I'm already old and I'm grey. <laughs> You've got eight years catching up to do. Yeah, I promise to always see you with the same eyes and same heart that I see with you in this exact moment. So today I vow to honour and respect you, support you and encourage you. I promise to dream with you, celebrate with you and walk beside you in all that God has to offer us both. I vow to laugh and always dance in the kitchen with you. I will comfort you during times of sorrow and I promise to always pursue you, fight for you and love you unconditionally and wholeheartedly for the rest of my life. I'm nearly done, last bit. I promise to always pray with you to build a loving family unit with you, with you and your two beautiful boys, Lucas and Theo. <sighs> Along with my very special daughter, Brittany. <sighs> my gosh, my gosh. You are my best friend and I am the luckiest person on the earth to call you man. With the words and the words of my heart, I marry you and buy my life to yours forever. All things work for the good of those who love God. I love you. Give her a clap, come on.
I need a tissue myself. Wow, thank you. That's the uh, first time hearing that. Speechless. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Um, okay, Natalie. I really don't know what these promises are about. I tried Googling it tonight before I wrote this, but I'm still none the wiser. So I'm just going to speak honestly and from the heart, as God would have me do. The past two years have been so amazing that I genuinely do not think there are any suitable words in the English language that can describe just how I feel. So again, I googled it. The past two years have been awesome. Nah, we can do better than that. The past two years have been incredible. Better, but still not there. The past two years have been prodigious. Admittedly, I had to Siri this one. <laughs> Stu stupendous, astounding, wondrous, tremendous. Now we're getting somewhere. At the end of the list, however, one word hit me. Miraculous. The Cambridge Dictionary definition of miraculous. Adjective, unusual and mysterious because of being caused by God or very surprising and unexpected. Bingo. The past two years have been miraculous. Our story of how we met in Penn, how we started going to church, how our relationship grew, and how we've managed to organise a wedding is exactly that, miraculous. We've shared so many experiences together, like being evacuated from Iron Bridge the night before your birthday, having a bonfire party outside with the lads, the adventures, adventures to Chateau Riamfa and Port Merion, to name but a few. Natalie, what means more to me than the days out and trips, though, is we have laughed so much. I know you love my singing. The food fights we have had, the air high five nearly three Christmases ago now. We've made so many memories, memories that will make me smile forever. What I love most about you isn't just the trips you've taken or all the fun we have had. You have listened, cared, loved, respected and supported me without judging or criticising. You're so kind, caring and thoughtful, often putting others' needs before your own. You are there for me and the boys no matter what. Natalie, you make me feel loved. I wake up every day and thank God for bringing you into my life. He really has overcompensated when I prayed for a Christian partner. Natalie, from this day on, when we leave this church, as husband and wife, there are certain promises I'm going to make to you, in front of all our families and friends, but most importantly, in front of God. I want to promise to be faithful, I will always be loyal, I will never cheat on you or talk bad of you to others. I promise to never abandon or leave you. I will be by your side through the good times and the bad. I will always be your loving husband. To protect and support you. I promise to do whatever it takes to keep you safe and out of danger. I will provide for you and will always have your back, no matter what. I think most importantly, I promise you, Natalie, to stay close to God. He brought us together and I know by living out his will, and following his direction, I will be the best husband I can be. Those are my promises I make to you before we are married. They are the very least you deserve. I could talk all day on how extraordinary, yeah, I Googled that again, you are and just how much I love you. But as you both know from our recoveries, it is the willingness and action that count. So my final promise to you, Natalie Lucy, about to become Matheson, is that I will take you to United Game. <laughs> no, seriously. I am a child of God. I am a father. And now my husband. This is my trinity, my triangle. My final promise is to take action in these three areas every day for the rest of my life. I love you.
got the blue microphone. You might have to turn that. We need two, two microphones. Brilliant. Well done, you two. Recognising that you stand in the presence of God, who knows all things and before whom you must one day appear, I require and charge you both that if either of you know of any reason why you may not be lawfully joined together, you should say so, you should confess it now. Connor, please will you repeat after me. I declare, I declare that I know of no legal reason. That I know of no legal reason. Why I, Connor Matheson, why I, Connor Matheson, may not be joined in marriage to, it may not be joined in marriage to, Natalie Jane Lutie. Natalie Jane Lutie. <laughs> Natalie, please repeat after me. Slowly. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I declare. I declare. That I know. That I know. Of no legal reason. Of no legal reason. Why I, Natalie Jane Lutie. Why I, Natalie Jane Lutie. May not be joined in marriage. May not be joined in marriage. To Connor Matheson. To Connor Matheson. Well done. Oh, no. <laughs> I, 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 oh. <laughs> Is it no. back in? Yeah, we're on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Connor, will you take Natalie to be your wife, to live together as God has directed in the sacred bond of marriage? Will you love her, comfort and honour her, keep her in sickness and in health, and be faithful to her as long as you both live? I will. Excellent. Natalie, will you take Connor to be your husband, to live together as God has directed in the sacred bond of marriage? Will you love him and submit to him as your husband? Will you honour him and keep him in sickness and in health and be faithful to him as long as you both live? I will. Brilliant. Can I ask, uh, who gives Natalie to be married to Connor today? Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Connor, microphone. Can you repeat after me? Would you like to hold hands? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call upon these persons present. I call upon these persons present. To witness that I, Connor Matheson. To witness that I, Connor Matheson. Do take thee. Do take thee. Natalie Jane Lutie. Natalie Jane Lutie. To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. Excellent. Natalie, repeat after me. I call upon these persons present. I call upon these persons present. To witness that I. To witness that I. Natalie Jane Lutie. Natalie Jane Lutie. Do take thee, Connor Matheson. Do take thee, Connor Matheson. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. Excellent. We'll do the rings bit now, Connor. Carl, have you got the rings, please? <laughs> Thank you. Add a child lock on it. <laughs> Connor, can you take the microphone as well? Would you like to place the, the ring on the left hand on the right finger? Brilliant. And then, Connor, can you repeat after me? I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of the promise. As a token of the promise. I have made you today. I have made you today. And as a sign of my love. And as a sign of my love. Excellent. Do you want to take the microphone, Natalie? Oh, yeah. And his left hand. Oh, yeah. Okay. Natalie, please repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a token of the vow as a token as a token of the vow of the vow made between us made between us and of my love and of my love excellent as Connor and Natalie have voluntarily and willingly bound themselves to each other in marriage by solemn promises before God and this congregation 
It is my privilege and joy to declare them to be husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What God has joined together, let not man pull apart. You may now kiss the bride. Excellent. Um, when we practiced this, Connor was throwing her over and all, and all sorts. Well done, Connor, for keeping self-control. We're going to... The, the couple are going to exit now through this door here, and then they're going to come back through and come back in through that door to sign the register. So, by all means, take pictures, and if you can press play on the last song, hope it's not raining out there. Would you like to take your seats? Please feel free to have a chat while they sign the register and if you want to take pictures as well, 